Well, hello. I'd want, today, I'd like to welcome you to my review of the Picasso fountain pen. So if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to talk about a classy black fountain pen, possibly, because I kind of like those slim black fountain pens, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So the Picasso fountain pen is, as you can see, fairly plain and black. It's when you start looking closer, you start to see the details. This is a nice pen with a lot of well-made details and nice packaging. I was very pleasantly surprised in it. In fact, this is a pen that belongs in my keepers. Uh, yeah, spoiler alert, too late. So let's take a look at a few details. So first of all, slim, bl slim black pen. Uh, finials are just plain and silver. When you look more closely, some Picasso-ish art there. The name Picasso, and that's about it for branding on the outside. Unclip it, or uncap it. It's not, you know, the hardest to un unclip. But it does have a nice snap when I put it, when I put, when I cap it. And by the way, it does post very nicely, but it is a lacquered metal pen. Uh, it has Picasso on the grip section. And the nib, how are we doing here, nib? Has some Picasso type artwork. And hey, 22 karat gold plate. Fairly typical feed. Uh, standard international converter, although it is Picasso. It has some writing I can't read yet. And interestingly, a little piece on the converter, which I don't know what it does. So I suppose the first thing you'd like to see is how does this pen write? All right, so the Picasso pen, I loaded it up with Noodler's Blue Note. No, I didn't. I totally lied. That's a different pen. Kyonuto. Kosu, which is a very attractive color. Oops, kick the table. Uh, does this pen flex? Oh, heck no. Very stiff nib. I will say that there's some line variation there. So perhaps it's ground a little bit stub-like. But yeah, definitely not a flex pen. A wetness and flow. It keeps up all right. A smear test, which admittedly is as much a test. Oops, and it'd be nice to see the results of that test, wouldn't it? Uh, I will admit that's as much a test of the ink as it is of the pen. Eh, reasonably wet, not amazing. And then there's the reverse writing. I would describe that as a very smooth extra fine. So let's take a look at a longer form writing sample and then we'll uh, discuss the pen. I did a short quote and it actually fit. So uh, what do I think of the pen? Well, I, I like it. It is a nice writer. It's not flashy. It just gets the job done. It's got, when you look at it, a few details that are just like, oh. And I'll be honest, I uh, am not an art person, really. I know who Picasso is. I've seen some of his art. I can kind of recognize his art when I see it. But uh, no, I'm just not 
a very cultured person. I, you know, I'm a redneck from North Dakota. But it's just kind of fun to see that those little details. Now, uh, that said, if I lost this pen, much as I like it, I, I, I'll be honest, it's not a pen I'd be clamoring to replace like it would, you know, if I lost my platinum president or something. Uh, it, it's fairly interchangeable with other similar pens. But if you're looking for a nice, reliable writer with a little bit of character to it, you can't go wrong with the Picasso. Now, one kind of interesting thing I'm going to show you here is the, the packaging. Zoom out. I don't, I'm not really big on packaging. In fact, I don't like packaging. I, I, I would like a, just a plain cardboard sleeve. Call it good. You know, when you when you get a Nakaya and it comes in a bamboo box and the pen has its own little skirt and a kerchief and a wrap and, you know, all these beds and whatnot that are in it and drawers and the packaging. and just like, eh, why? Just send it to me in a cardboard sleeve. But I recognize the packaging is part of what makes it a luxurious experience when you first get the pen. Because first impressions... You know, that's what they tell you about job interviews. That's why if I go to a job interview, you won't see me wearing this. You'll see me, I'll have a jacket on and a tie and a white shirt and nice pants and all ironed. Uh, it, you know, first impressions, for better or for worse. That's why when you get a new class, you start off, lay down the law. You know, you can loosen up as you get to know them and they get to know you, but first impressions are what matter. So I get packaging as a first impression. I'm just one of those weirdos with pens. I feel like I don't want to pay for the packaging. So the packaging, make sure it's on screen here. Packaging looks like this. Let's put it under the close-up. So uh, I don't remember the name of that piece of art, but I think her face. There. Her face is what this is. And what's on the nib. I don't know if uh, this company had to pay any kind of licensing or because it's Chinese they got away with not. A lot of stuff I can't read because uh, I don't read very many Chinese characters. It might be a Picasso 916, I'm not sure. So you open the outer sleeve. Out comes this doohickey. Again, there's that same lady. I actually kind of like this pattern. I'm, I'm, my brain is working right now trying to think of how can I somehow express this in the title for the pen. Because usually I just do plain lettering for the title. Upside down, upside down, but yeah. And then you open this. It's got a magnetic closure. Inside. This is a booklet that was originally up here in this envelope. It must have fallen out during the time I carried it downstairs. You know, a little piece dove thing. There's our lady friend again. And then you page through it. And there's a lot of different pens being advertised in here. A little bit about Pablo Picasso um, in Spanish and in English. I'm curious about the red here in the Chinese. Is that how they represent quotes? And I honestly don't know. But yeah, a lot of information about Picasso and trying to sell pens, obviously. I'll bet this is a Picasso 916 now. Guarantee. So, and then they have websites. How to fill They tell you that the, there are a higher, there is a higher level of pen with obviously nicer packaging than I got. Uh, some of the other stuff, you get this card for whatever it's worth. It was in a nice little plastic pen sleeve, cellophane. And then this thing, which, oops, there we go, was around the clip to let you know that it's genuine gold plate. And, of course, it laid in a nice satin-esque bed. Mm -hmm. 
I uh, lately a few people have convinced me that I should be saving the packaging for my pens, but uh, you know, especially if I plan to sell them. But then at the same time, I think you know, really, why would I save the packaging for this? Well, I've been sitting on it for over a year, mainly because uh, I filmed a video of this pen last year and then didn't upload it because I'd let the ink dry out too much and it wasn't a fair video, so I just thought, eh, redo it, and wasn't until a year later I actually redid it. Um, that said, if, if you're looking for a nice, simple black pen with a little bit of character, there you go. So hope was interesting, hope was useful. Uh, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and all price points, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to talk about Picasso or this particular black pen, or maybe you know the name of the piece of art that's represented here, or how they can get away with doing it, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.